welcome to the Coach Caitlin Show. I'm your host, Coach Caitlin, and I am so happy you've decided to join me here at the Pink Couch for a coaching session. So if you're tuning in for the first time to the Coach Caitlin Show, each day, each episode, we're gonna be talking about topics, and I'll be coaching you through the process of succeeding in these topics, because I am for your future in the areas of life, love, and leadership. And so some episodes you'll see, um, if you look at past episodes, we have some expert, expert co-host panelists and then sometimes I'll be doing a one-on-one -on -one coaching lesson teaching or sharing something from my heart and so today you've joined me got the coffee I'm sharing from my heart today and I'm excited that you're here but before I move on I want to explain something so a lot of people say what makes you a coach first thing that makes me a coach is I've done this for over 10,000 hours. I've been a coach for over six years and I've also, I have my master's degree in organizational leadership with a focus in coaching. I'm certified under the number one leadership expert in the world, John Maxwell. But also one thing that makes me a coach is that I am able to help guide people to be what they want to be. This definition of a coach simply states it. A person who gets you to do what you don't want to do to be who you want to be. A person who gets you to do what you don't want to do to be who you want to be. I am here to help you be who you want to be. And so I pray that today's show helps you in that. And I also, not just on this show, but throughout the week, throughout your life, I want to be here as a support, guiding you to succeed and become the best you, to have the best life you desire to have. And so let's stay connected. If you go to coach, coach with a K, you'll see it on the screen, coachcaitlin.com forward slash the show, coachcaitlin.com forward slash the show. You're going to see my social media links, Instagram, Facebook, Coach Caitlin, YouTube, subscribe. Um, you're going to see ways I can come speak at your church. I'm doing a lot of traveling now, speaking at churches, women's conferences. You can also see my books and resources. I have two books, Slay and Pray and Habits Not Hopes. One's a devotional. One is the 10 habits of every successful person that we need to implement and so much more in past episodes. So make sure you go to coachhaitland.com forward slash the show. Okay, that was a mouthful. Today I want to, this is more of a heavy topic, but I felt very impressed to share this topic today and to talk with you about this. I feel like it's one-on-one -on -one and there may be someone here who's watching this who you particularly are going through this struggle or you know someone, maybe you're a mom, a grandparent, a sibling, a friend and you see someone going through this situation, I want to share with you um, a, a, today's topic is escaping an eating disorder. Escaping an eating disorder. And one thing that I've seen over and over again is so many young girls and women struggling with eating disorders and to overcome them. Struggling to say, I am enough and not continuing to battle an eating disorder that is wrecking their lives. And so I wanna just share, first of all, some statistics that uh, are most up to date on eating disorders. So here we go. 9% of the worldwide population suffers from an eating disorder. 28.8, 28.8 28 Americans have an eating disorder in their lifetime. That's 28.8 million Americans have an eating disorder in their lifetime. Eating disorders are among the deadliest mental illnesses, second only to opioid overdose. That's right. The eating disorder um, epidemic is second only to opioid crisis overdose in mental illness. And I know that, you know, most of my shows are, you know, uplifting. Most of them are guiding you to happy things. But one thing that I felt impressed to do on today's show is somebody needs to hear that you're not the only one struggling with this. And we have to talk about real issues and eating disorders are real issues. 10,000, when you just hear this, this is startling statistics. 10,200 deaths each year are a direct result of an eating disorder. 10,200 deaths each year are a direct result of an eating disorder. Do you know what that means? 
That means that there is a death every 52 minutes because of an eating disorder. A death every 52 minutes because of an eating disorder. And 26% of people with an eating disorder attempt suicide. 26% of people with eating disorder commit suicide, or attempt suicide. And I know this is heaviness, but there is a light at the end in this tunnel because I am sitting here today as not somebody who just survived an eating disorder, but someone who is thriving after an eating disorder. And I want to share with you today this hope that you too can push through that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe you're watching this and you're dealing with anorexia. God has hope for you. There's light at the end of the tunnel. There's more than just what you are eating. Maybe you're bulimic. Maybe you're on the other end of the spectrum and you are comforting yourself so much with food that you are hurting your body because of being overweight, because of struggling with food addiction. Maybe you're a mom who you have been concerned for a long time, like my mom was, with an eating disorder, and you don't know how to step in. But can I tell you, it was my mom who stepped in, and I'm here today. There is hope at the end of this, and I want to tell someone right now who's struggling with an eating disorder that there is going to be a day where you find freedom, that there is going to be a day where you love food again, that there is going to be a day where you walk in health and not restraint. Because what I found and what from my own experience is that there there are times when you know what you need to do. You know you need to eat. You know at the end of the day you should feel acceptance of yourself, but there is that block. And today I want to give you hope that you can get past that block and become all you were created to be. I love this quote. It says, you can't hate yourself happy. You can't criticize yourself thin. You can't shame yourself worthy. Real change begins with self-love and self-care. I'm going to read that again just because it's so powerful. You can't hate yourself happy. You can't criticize yourself thin. You can't shame yourself worthy. Real change begins with self-love and self-care. We have to realize that no matter, and I want you to realize that no matter how much we change our bodies, we can't make ourselves happy through how we look. We can only make ourselves happy through who we are in Christ. Ephesians 2, 10 says, We are His handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which Christ prepared for advance for us to do. And Psalm 139, 14, it says, We are fearfully and wonderfully made. One thing you need to understand is that eating disorders are an assignment of the enemy to stop you from becoming all God wants you to be. Why do you think? that the enemy is causing so many of us. Now, eating disorders affect males too, but this affects so many women, so many young girls. Why? Because he wants to stop you from being all you were created to be. So I just want to take you on a journey of my story. I want to preface this by saying eating disorders are close to my heart because I'm an eating disorder, not only survivor, but thriver. And that's what I want you to be those struggling. I also want you to get help. So if you are watching this and you, and you hear my story, you hear these statistics, if you or someone you know is battling an eating disorder, Google research help. There's a lot of help out there for free. A lot of insurance are starting to help with that. Get the real help so that you can continue to move on and thrive. Um, and so I want to begin to share with you my story and also let you know, I'm not a professional counselor. I am not someone who um, counsels people through eating disorders. What you're going to hear today is my story going through an eating disorder, my personal journey about how it was both identified, how it started, how I got through it, how I maintain living in freedom today, and my personal journey. Everybody's journey is different. Some people need more formal counseling. Some people need other things. So find the help you need and get past this. But I pray that through me sharing my journey today, that you're going to find out bits and pieces that will help you along the way or spark you to get help for those in need. So here we go on my personal journey. So I grew up in a house with three girls. I grew up in a small town and I, when I was a child, I was overweight as a child, just, you know, some baby fat and some after school snacks too much. <laughs> 
But I was overweight as a child, and so one thing that, that when you're overweight in elementary school and middle school, a lot of times you get bullied. I don't know if you've ever dealt with bullying. I don't know if your child, your grandchild, your sibling ever dealt with bullying, but bullying can really shape you to make you feel less about yourself, to make you feel hurt, to harbor a pain on the inside. And so I got bullied a lot just because I was overweight and you know I, I wasn't looking the best back in the day. And so I didn't realize how much that affected me. I began to put on the tough mechanism. I began to be strong. I began to say, no, that doesn't bother me and so forth. But I didn't realize that it did bother me. Have you ever been in a place in life where you thought, nothing bothered you, but then all of a sudden you realize the thing that you said didn't bother you did bother you. Well, that's what happened to me. And as I began to get into my seventh grade year, my eighth grade year, I began to get taller. I was active. I was always active um, as a cheerleader. And so I began to get taller. And as I got taller and uh, I began to thin out, I began to become um, more and more thin. I began to really, um, just thin out and so what I found was that as I thinned out I began to get a lot more attention attention from friends attention from boys and I began to just be like wow this is awesome the thinner I am the better people like me I began to associate my appearance with my acceptance I began to I'm gonna say that again because that's powerful key I began to associate my appearance with my acceptance. And so I began to continue to remain thin. I got thinner, stayed active in cheerleading, got involved in cheerleading um, in a high school, made the team. And so my ninth grade year, I really, you know, not that I was the most popular, but I was around a group of people, you know, felt very accepted. Um, again, because I was thinner, I was loving my look. I decided to do my first pageant when I was in ninth grade. And I didn't really think about, you know, food as much because I was like, you know, I'm thin, I'm active, and so everything was going well. And then our church did a Daniel's fast. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of a Daniel's fast, but basically it's like committing to be a no bread, no meat, no sweets for 21 days. And it had become something really popular that people did um, as a corporate church body, and people still do it today. And so being a Christian girl that I was, I wanted to participate in what I called the Daniel's fast. And so I participated and, you know, a lot of times now I won't say that fasting causes you to have an eating disorder. Again, I'm telling you my story and how when you want to use something to good to get closer to God, even in those moments, the enemy sometimes can step in and get a foothold. And what happened for me personally in that season, since then I've done fast and this has not happened. But in this particular season, me beginning the Daniel's fast became a foothold and so I did the 21 days and I got on the scale and I saw that I had lost weight and I was like wow well so I had lost weight and three weeks after the Daniel's fast for the church ended I was competing in my very first beauty pageant again beauty pageants I've done since feel very healthy very whole but and I love beauty pageants but in this season. And so I said, you know what? Since I already lost weight doing the Daniel's fast, let me just stay on the Daniel's fast and get a little bit stricter um, on my journey. And then I'll lose weight for the pageant. And so I lost even more weight and had a great time in the pageant. I won the pageant. I got a modeling scholarship. And it was all wonderful opportunities, wonderful to be accepted. I won those things for who I was, not necessarily for the size I was and so I began to just be so excited about this modeling opportunity pageantry and I began to go down a slippery slope what started out as staying on the Daniels fast slowly turned to staying on the Daniels fast and counting calories and having a healthy amount of low calories soon became cutting those calories down and soon became cutting those calories down, lo losing 10 more pounds, losing uh, 10 more pounds. And slowly but surely, I came to a point of anorexia. 
It was something that I would only eat the same things every day. I got down to 400 calories a day. I was consuming 400 calories a day and I got down to 85 pounds and I'm five, seven and a half. And the, I was 85 pounds. I, I've been five, seven and a half since my ninth grade year of high school. And I came down to 85 pounds and I looked, I mean, of course I looked, I didn't think it at the time, but I looked ill. I looked very ill. And I remember going, you know, my guidance counselor, some kids had reported me and I was like, they are just jealous. And that's the one thing you'll find in eating disorders. It's always denial at the beginning. And can I tell you, you know, for those of you watching that maybe you have a family member, you have someone that's your concern about having an eating disorder. One thing that I want to say is that I, I think a lot of times our knowledge and even though we want to help. I remember people who wanted to help me so bad and they had the best intentions, but their intentions were, well, all you have to do is just eat more. All you have to do is just eat more. And can I say for, this is being completely transparent. And so I'm, I'm getting to you from that perspective and this counselors may think that I'm just crazy for being this transparent. But if you are constantly telling people, all you need to eat more, the greatest fear of someone who is dealing with anorexia, dealing with an eating disorder, is that you are trying to make them fat. You're trying to make them fat. And that's what I thought when everybody would say, all you gotta do is eat, all you gotta do is eat more. All I would, would hear would say, I want you to be fat, Caitlin. I want you to be fat, Caitlin. And so I didn't listen to them because I was like, why? You just want me to be fat. And that wasn't the case. They wanted me to be healthy. But this is, again, why it comes back to what it says. Eating disorders are among the deadliest mental illnesses. It is a mental illness. And so I want to insert this by saying that you can solve, if you have an eating disorder yourself and you're watching this, or you know someone with an eating disorder and you're watching this, or you are seeing those traits and maybe your daughter, your granddaughter, your friend, your niece, you're seeing these traits. You need to realize that you love that person but they need actual counseling. They need help. They need medical help. They need mental health because logic is out the roof. Logic is out the roof. Logic for me was out the roof. Knowing that I need to eat more, yeah, I knew that, but logically I couldn't compute that. And, and again, I was saying people are making me fat when I was seeing myself as fat and I wasn't. And so people need real issues. See, what, one thing that I found is with eating disorders, people try to solve the surface of the eating disorder. Well, you just need to eat. But an eating disorder is in the mind and in the heart and in the spirit. So real help. And so what happened is I, I didn't listen to the guidance counselors, but one day I went to my pediatric endocrinologist and my mom um, asked me to step out of the room for a second. You know, he checked on me and um, asked me to step out of the room. Um, mom said she needed to talk to him and she began to tell my endocrinologist just about my weight and the issues going on. And so they called me back into the room and she got help. You know, my mom was doing the best she could and she saw that I was drowning in this eating disorder and she did the best thing mothers can do or caregivers can do, get medical help, get medical help. And so I came back in and I'll never forget this. He said, Caitlin, you are significantly underweight. Um, this may be TMI, but I had not had a period in six months because of how I had damaged my body and I didn't have enough fat. Anyway, TMI. But um, I went through the journey. I went through the process. And he said, if you keep going on, three things are going to happen. Number one, you're going to lose your ability to have children. Number two, you're gonna get more painful. It's gonna become um, more in pain. Things are gonna start shutting down in your body. And number three, you're gonna die. Number one, you're not gonna be able to have children. Number two, things are gonna start shutting down in your body. Number three, you're gonna die. Now, I don't know if you ever had a doctor look at you in the face and say, if you don't wake up, if you don't start working on this, you are going to die. It's, a, it's truly a life or death moment that I only had a few months. If I had kept on this journey, 
I was going to die for my eating disorder. And so from that moment on, I began to not only seek help from God, but I got help from a counselor. I got help from, not that I wanted to, and let me say this to those of you watching, I feel like not to be dramatic, but this episode is literally saving lives today. It is saving lives because parents, if you're watching this, let me tell you this, or grandparent, whatever, if, if you're helping someone, or you're watching this and you're struggling with an eating disorder, I complain about every meal I, that was monitored that I had to eat. I complained about every doctor's appointment I had to go to I, starting after that doctor's appointment with death, I had to get weighed every single week. I complained about every single, um, every single thing I went through. And, and, and now I had been a cheerleader my whole life, but I physically was so sick, so frail, I couldn't cheer for the rest of my high school career. And, and that was a wake up call too. But let me tell you, I complained every single thing I went to on this journey of overcoming my eating disorder. But in the complaint, I knew that at the end of the day, my parents cared about me, these people cared about me, and because I had a vision for the future, I knew that I wanted to live. I knew that I wanted to live. And I went through the journey, I went back and forth, you know, I had a couple of relapses, but I came out of that stronger in my faith, stronger my body, stronger my mind, stronger my spirit. And now I have a beautiful son. I was able to have children, so I have a beautiful son. I have a family and I have a thriving career in ministry. Why? Because someone took time to say her eating, her habits are not healthy and to get me medical help, medical help for what was a mental illness and eating disorder. And so I want to encourage you, you know, I, I will tell you a few steps that worked for me. Number one, it was getting the medical help. So again, if you are suffering from an eating disorder, you think you have those symptoms, or if you're a parent, someone who sees someone in your life you care about dealing with an eating disorder, here are the steps that I did. But again, I encourage you to reach out, do your research, Google, find a place that is going to help treat the person for the mental illness aspect of it because if your mind's not strong you're not going to make it through so one thing the first thing that really helped me on this journey and this process was that i got medical help i was able to hear a doctor not my mom who i just thought cared about me and wanted me to eat not just a guidance counselor i was like all these friends at school a medical doctor who literally showed me the facts on the chart you are going to die if you don't begin to change your ways. Two, I got medical help. I weighed once a week. I went to um, counseling sessions. I stayed connected with my doctor. I had monitored meals, so I got actual help. So I had a doctor tell me the problem. Number two, I had medical help help me in the process of it. Number three, my parents were really intentional with me about having a vision for my future and began to talk to me about what I wanted in my future. See, a lot of times we want people free from stuff, but free from eating disorders, even free from addiction, but we don't give them something to. We tell them to leave something behind, but we don't take them to something. And my husband who has recovered from um, drug and alcohol addiction told me that the thing that got him through because I asked him you know there were so many people I know who never have made it out of those addiction problems and he said you know the thing that helped him was that he began to have a vision for his future so he wasn't just giving up this addiction but he was walking to something so my parents created a clear vision for me and when I began to say you know what I do want a family I do want a husband I do want to do more pageants I do want to feel well enough to run. I do want to go to college. I do want to have a business. I do want to travel the world and speak and be on television and do ministry and write books. And when I saw what I wanted to do and realized that if I didn't change my pattern, I would not make it, it began to give me motivation to move forward. And so number one, I had a doctor tell me, not just a family member, a doctor tell me that I needed help. Number two, I had medical help. 
nutritionist, a whole team to help me out during this process. Number three, my parents helped, to help me craft a vision for my future so I knew why I was leaving my eating disorder to push forward. Number four, and this is not like out of order, but I really began to get involved even more in my church and began to read the Bible for myself and began to really write down the lies that I believed about myself and then found scripture that told me the truth about myself. So I began to do scriptures and read in my Bible and be intentional about about that. And number five, I began to be cautious. And this is key. There were certain things that would trigger me. Um, you know, if you've gone through any type of trauma, if you've gone through any type of addiction or mental illness like eating disorders, you know that there are triggers that will send you down a path. And I knew for me that watching certain shows or reading certain magazines or following certain people on social media made me begin to question myself, made me question who I am, made me question what I do. And it caused me to think and, and like hurt me on my mental illness with eating disorders. And so I began to stand guard, unfollow certain accounts, never get certain magazines, never watch certain things. Why? Because I wanted to stay the path. So here I am over 10 years later, thriving past the eating disorder, not dealing with this anymore, was able to happily go through my pregnancy, being okay with the weight gain, being okay with the, the discomfort, being okay with how I look and how the differences are, having a healthy relationship with exercise, having a healthy relationship with food because of God and because of these strategies that I had along the way. Again, medical health, a medical professional telling me I had a problem, medical health, vision for my future, diving into the scriptures of understanding my identity in Christ. And number five, eliminating the triggers that caused me to fall back into the habit of that eating disorder thinking. So that has been my complete transparent story today, but I pray that it has helped you today. If you have any questions, again, you can reach out to me, coachcaitlin.com forward slash the show on social media, Coach Caitlin, we can stay connected. I'd love to encourage you in your journey. And also I encourage you, if you or someone you know is suffering with an eating disorder or are showing exhibiting patterns, Google find help near the city that you are in find help so that you can get past this mental illness that is killing that is seeing deaths every 52 minutes and you can push past this mental illness and become a healthy thriving you because i don't just want you to survive I want you to thrive. I pray that this show has helped you today. If you're struggling with an eating disorder, know that God thinks you're beautiful and so do I. I'm praying that you move from surviving to thriving. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.